You idiots don't know when to quit, do you? You are Phil Warriors. We fought them before. This is their third attack on the base in as many months. But something's different each time. Their weapons slightly more disciplined. And always larger numbers. Their strikes are planned. Not the usual smash and grab. Wrap this up, troops. Pitch your move and block those damn exits. I want at least one of these punks left conscious this time. Seriously? Rah? Huh? You're obviously not smart enough to be in charge. But smart enough to answer some questions. Wait over there. Oh! Take him down hard, crew. But none die tonight. These tactics ain't working anymore, Jones. The more skulls we crack, the more line up for the same wicked thing two weeks later. Yeah, straight. I'm getting too old for us to get some cool crack. It's the price we pay for being the good guys. So you say. What my crew for complaining? They're right. There are too many bad guys. Too few of us. And it's only getting worse. Month after month. Year after year. <laughs> in the 15 years since Ludo and the Foot Clan fell, the corruption in New York's gotten out of control. All levels. There are as many criminals inside the government as outside it. The crime bosses are calling all the shots. See you on everything else. <laughs> Half a rock bottom's out of work. Leaving us to fend for ourselves. While the rich hoard everything. No one trusts the police either. The few good cops that do exist are just overwhelmed as we are. Leaving all kinds of low-level gangs to run the streets. God! In our facilities, Jack and A they can get their hands on. And it's up to us to hold the line. Do the right thing for our people. The resistance were supposed to be peacekeepers after we took down the foot. Instead, it's become a war of attrition. And we ain't winning. Okay, that's enough. Get the hell out of here. All of you. Crawl home and tell all the others. Next time, no one walks out of here. This one's still able to talk, Swave? I... I ain't saying nothing. We'll see. The last time you punks were here, you didn't have such pre-outfits and fancy equipment. Who's hooking you up? Think I'm gonna... Uh, tell you... You... You goody two-shoe losers. Everyone on the streets knows... Mm, you're nothing... Get him out of my face before I take his off. What's the plan, Casey? Throw his sorry ass over to Commander Zagoza's bunker. <laughs> Screw you, resistant pigs. I ain't no snitch. Right. Good luck. We need better intel, Scrape. Tell the interrogation team to press him. My pleasure. I got all the intel you need right now. This ain't working. Yeah, these fools need a permanent beatdown, not more interrogation. Maybe let's keep trying it my way a bit longer. Now get some rest. I'm heading home to check on my kids. Hurry up! Sans is gonna kill us! Come on already. She's not gonna kill us. Much.
We're teenagers. We're supposed to be rebellious. Isn't that your whole thing, Moa? Besides being morbid? Being a rebel's no excuse to be stupid, idiot. Ah, you're just scared of sensei. Ooh, big bad Ono with this big bad I'm grown up at. Funny you don't talk so tough when sensei's training us, Captain Buttkiss. Uh, whatever. Let's just get started. Yes, and it's my turn. I love when I tell the tale. Me too, especially how you tell it, Yi. But can you please go back to the mind reading? The pictures are cooler inside my head that way. So dramatic, like in a comic book. Jeez, grow up, dude. It's called telepathy. Leave him alone, oh no, he knows what it's called. And why do you have to do this every time anyway? It's not like we have him like trillion times already. Because it's a promise we made to one another. The first time we found out our own secret lair. To always remember where we come from, to honor the heroes who came before, and to show respect for everything Master Splinter has taught all of us. Yeah, and how lucky we are to have our family in our forever home. Everybody right? Yup, ditto. Fine. Okay, here we go. The story of us began long, long time ago. Back when the most powerful ninja warriors in all Japan were the Foot Clan. The two best of the best in the clan were the brave and honorable Hamato Yoshi, and the ruthless and the evil Uroku Naji. Although their friendship was strong as children, Saki became obsessed with taking absolute power over all of the Foot Clan. As they grew older, he swore no one would stand in his way, including Hamato Yoshi. Their bond of brothership was already nearly broken. By the time, the young and beautiful Ting Shen chose Yoshi over Naji, and Naji could not stand to be denied. One dark and stormy night, Saki demanded Ting Shen to confess her true love for him, and not Yoshi. When she refused, his jealousy turned violent. The only thing stronger than all the power of the Foot Clan was the love Hamato Yoshi and Tang Shen had for each other. So when Yoshi returned home to discover the horror of Saki's rage, he was blinded by anger. The once mighty Foot Clan was now a house divided many soldiers, along with the rest of the Hamato family retreated to the safety of the mountains, and would later become the Honorable Clan Hamato, the only warriors to stand against the terror of the Foot Clan at the time. And Hiroko Nachi was no more. The reminder of the Foot, however, sided with the young Hiroko Saki, and turned to the dark and dishonorable underworld of power, crime, and murder. And all the while, Saki plotted his revenge. That was the day Naji's only son, Rugu Saki, swore mortal revenge against Hamato Yoshi for killing his father. The blood feud has begun. To escape Yoshi's crime against the Foot Clan, he protected the rest of their family, and it was agreed that Yoshi and Shen must seek refuge in the steel and concrete mountains of New York City until a proper truce could be negotiated, taking only their precious belongings, like Yoshi's beloved pet rat Splinter. And with the help of the elite sensei, Master Yeb, they made the journey east to a humble, loving home, far away from danger. Or so they thought. The years passed in Orogusaki's hatred of Amao Yoshi, and Tang Shen grew even stronger, as he did the Foot Clan's evil empire. Eventually, Saki's spies found the young lovers in New York. Now leader of the Foot, and clad in razor-sharp armor, and calling himself the Shredder, Saki savagely ended the blood feud. And his vengeance was complete. Or so he thought. The 
old rat's splinter survival instincts took over. He fled into the nearby sewers, where he was greeted by the most amazing sight. Four baby turtles, happily waiting in a puddle of thick, green ooze. Once again, the years passed, and the rat and the turtles made their sewers their home. The mysterious ooze had changed them all into mutants, into a family. Splinter, as their adopted father, named the turtles. This is my favorite part. Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello, and Raphael. Master Splinter, as a sensei, trained them in the art of ninjutsu in order to destroy the Shredder for the murder of Hamato Yoshi and Teng Shen, and to end the Foot Clan's reign of terror forever. Using every skill Master Splinter taught the Turtles over many, many years of training, the historic showdown was a battle royale that will became legendary in our family's history. Every beginning must have an ending, and this night, the four Ninja Turtles made sure Robosaki met his. The story goes that it was Leonardo who said, it seems that the Shredder has been shredded. Unfortunately, it was not the ending they hoped for. The battle with the Shredder is over, yes, but the blood feud was not, and the war with the Foot Clan had just begun. It was then that our four feathers understood they could no longer just be warriors of vengeance. They chose to protect the innocent in our city of New York as well. Oroko Saki's direct heir, Oroko Karai, took the war to the city streets. It seemed a never-ending conflict. The blood feud remained thicker than water. When Raphael fell, and the Rogu Kurai was consumed by the forever sleep. The dark days of her soul air, Rogu Haruto began. All the heroes were lost, as was any hope of salvation. For years, the underending terror and suffering in the city were unbearable. And it would seem the last flicker of light would fade. He returned. The last Ronin. Michelangelo, the family's sole survivor, rising like an avenging knight above New York to end the Heroku bloodline and the Forever War. Together with our grandmother April and our mom and Sensei Casey Marie and the heroes of the Resistance, the tide of the battle was finally turned. And the last Roku was no more. Michelangelo's family was avenged, and New York City was free again. But not without incredible loss. Michelangelo was the last of his kind. A lifelong friend to Grandma, and a mentor to our mom, and a hero to us all. And we all wish we had a chance to know him. That was when we were born, and we have turned ever since to carry on the honorable traditions of Clan Amato, Master Splinter, and Master Michelangelo, to always protect and serve our family, our friends, and our city. Not bad. Not how I do it, but good enough. Ah, you're just jealous because he tells it better than you, Ono. No, I'm not. And I didn't say I was better. I just do it differently, that's all. Here we go again. Yup. Anyway, it's getting late. Let's go. Well, at least you're right about one thing tonight. Huh. Whatever. <sighs> okay, Marley. Go ahead and send everyone but the Night Watch home. You got it, Dr. Jones. All right, guys, pick it up. 
We're calling it a day. Another great job today. Thanks, everyone. See you tomorrow. Okay, Ahmed. How bad is it? Well, Dr. Jones, we made, um, some progress with the pumps. We were keeping water levels down this sector, but until the expand, uh, the patchwork, we're spending more time chasing leads than we were tunneling. Which we can't view or parts for anyway, boss. Specifics, please. My inventory shows we, uh, have enough fuel to keep 30% of the application equipment. Opera. And we have zero, um, drill bits left for our main boring machine. We were sure to fabricate them ourselves. We knew finding replacement parts would be tough. I'll reach out to Tinker or two and see if she knows anything available on the black market fuel too. Good luck with that, wacko. Anything else? Um, yeah, we should, um, probably discuss the complications we're having with manpower. What's to discuss? It's not too complicated. We have way more work than people to do it. <sighs> I'll speak with Commander Zaragoza and see if he can spare more troops. That'll be tough, Dr. Jones. All the resistance team is spread way too thin. And recruiting. Well, most folks got too many other things to worry about these days. What we're doing. Maybe I'll talk to him. He knows how crucial connecting these old tunnels will be for moving support troops and emergency teams around the city. Well, if you allow me uh, to assist you with the development of the nanomaterials we've been using for the patchwork that would um, um, free up some of our current workforce from having to constantly deal with the leakage issues. Let me think on more, man. I'm still running a lot of safety tests on this new tech. I just want to make sure I know what I'm doing before bringing you into the middle of it. I, um... Okay. Well, I know I'm not the only one tired as hell. We'll look at these problems with fresh eyes tomorrow. Time to head home. Dang it! We should have gone straight down the west side! Getting through the neighborhood takes way too long! Who's worried about being late now, huh? Besides, there's too many homeless over there. This would be quicker. They're everywhere. I feel so sad for them. I wish we could help them somehow. Me too. So Sensei says we gotta stay underground, because most people wouldn't understand us. Do you think she'll ever change her mind? Maybe, but right now, we gotta get our butts home before we get put on restriction again. Yeah. Last time, it was three months of no games. Since he said next time, it's gonna be six. Wait, what? Six? Knock off the chatter, jeez. Now you sound like Sensei. Besides, you start it. And I'm ending it. Hustle, just buy more blocks. I thought we were hustling. Because we wait doesn't mean we'll get caught. We sneak out the same way we snuck out. Easy. Except nobody was home when we snuck out, oh no. Just why we gotta do it quick and quiet, E. Like ninjas. Hell yeah. Oh, spare me. Remember. Quick and quiet. Hey, did you see that? Still dark. No one's home yet. You'll be even lucky if Grandma April brings home takeout. I'm starving. Talk about lucky. What's new? Wait. Something smells wrong. You and your overreacted nose, Moa. Just keep moving, drop the gear, and get to our rooms before they... Check it out. Looks like we got some nasty cockroaches sneaking around the place. Yep. Except roaches are usually quick enough to scatter when the lights come on. Where have you, sneaky little bugs, been? It was Ono's idea. Dude! 
No, that's not true. It was all our idea. Are... are we in trouble? Nah, it's fine. Let's order pizza and celebrate you for breaking the rules. What do you think, Yi? You and me both, kid. But the pizza idea does sound pretty good. I'm just way too tired to decide what punishment is right now. Moa said that next time we snuck out, we were supposed to get six months of restriction. She, what the hell? What well, uh, she meant to say is that going outside was a good way to practice our, um, our stealth skills. Yeah, yeah, self-practice. Really, seems more like practicing your lying skills to me. Uh, get washed up, kids. We'll figure out a dinner as soon as the news is over. I swear, if you think we make up these rules to just be hard asses and not for their safety. I hear you, kiddo. Lucky for me, you never broke any of my rules when you were their age. Whatever. <laughs> Good evening, New York. This is Amanda Rose Hunter, reporting live for Channel 6 News. From the steps of City Hall, where moments ago, Mayor Palamudi and Police Chief Farley concluded what at best can be described as contentious press conference. Let me guess. More of the same old, same old lie and redirect. They got no clue people are already past the breaking point. Or they just don't care. Hey, it's Amanda Connor. She is so awesome. And pretty. Jeez. Thirsty, my children? When asked about addressing years of steadily rising crime rates in the city, Mayor Palmelodi had this to say. By focusing on the slightly elevated crime rate, you lose sight of the main plan, expending available job opportunities for our citizenry. We are working diligently with business leaders in our community to introduce a variety of new employment opportunities citywide, which will help reduce criminal activity. When pressed as to what kinds of protections and life support citizens should expect while these so-called near-future job opportunities are being discussed, the mayor turned the podium over to Chief Farley. Look, I'd be doing every cop in my force I deserve if I didn't call out the media for adding unnecessary drama to an already complicated situation. Things aren't perfect in the city right now, but they aren't as bad as you reporters are painting them. I guarantee all the officers of the NYPD are doing the very best to keep it that way. Then we shouldn't worry about the rumors of a citywide gang war brewing, which if it's true, could potentially put all New Yorkers in its crossfire. Right, exactly, rumors. That's what you news hacks are operating from these days. Uh, what the chief means is, despite any unfounded gossip to the contrary, my administration working in tandem, the police department feels confident the city is on positive, speedy, and most importantly, peaceful path to recovery. Now, if you'll excuse us, Lieutenant Yuro Watanabe will take things from here. That'll be all for today, ladies and gentlemen. Please feel free to submit any further questions to the officers directly. Thank you. We are once and again left with more questions and answers for this administration, which continually fails to put in place in any real plans for recovery or actually address overwhelming homelessness and food shortages. And with independently tabulated crime statuses, providing a factual counter to Chief Farley's claims, a media-driven historia is guarantees to protect and serve fall far short of the needs of the real people in our city. One thing you can be certain of, however, is that I will continue to push for answers and provide any updates as soon as they become available. Amanda Rose Hunter, reporting live from the City Hall for Channel 6 News. War hero. He's gotta be frustrated by all this. Beyond. It's clear what's going wrong, but he doesn't know who to trust to help him fix it. The Resistance could really use someone like him. Have you talked to him about Jordan? Not yet. 
I still want to keep those two worlds separate. Too many lives at stake to make any mistakes right now. Well, I think waiting to eat any longer is a mistake. Who's ready for dinner? I am. Shocker. Oh crap. That's the emergency line. Commander Zygoza, what's going on? Sorry, Casey. I know you came off your shift. We got two facilities under attack, and I don't have the troops to reinforce both. The Sector 7 armory in the West Hall is a priority, but the main food bank in the urgent care base, on the docks, and two bridges are getting hit hard. I'm taking the squad out town, but two bridges is your backyard. Can you pull your team back together to deal with that? But, my guys have gone two weeks straight without a break. Anyone you can find, Casey. They need reinforcements, now! They're being overrun! What's going on? Commander Sar goes at two more base under attack. It's... It's bad. They need help right now. And there's no one left but... <sighs> Kids, grab your gear. Weapons too. Time to fight. Wait, Casey, it's too soon. Let's... let's talk about this. Finally, some real action! Time to kick some serious ass. Oh no, language. I'm gonna call Commander Spangles. They have to be other soldiers he can send. It's okay, Grandma. We've been training our whole lives. Yeah, we'll be totally safe. No time, Mom. It's up to us. Sorry. Damn it, Casey Marie! Commander Zaragoza wasn't kidding. This is a freaking mess. Bad enough they steal our stuff, but now they're trashing the place too. Okay, nothing fancy, just follow my lead. Pick a target, and take him down, hard. Yeah! Don't you idiots know everything here is already free? All you gotta do is wait in line to get it. Just like everyone else. Ah! Be a lot less painful that way. For you. Oh. Since he's a beast, I'm not sneaking out of the lair ever again. Hey, ninjas! This is what you trained all your lives for! Quit standing around and fight! Since he's right! Come on! Damn it. Maybe Mom's right. Ugh. Maybe he's pushing them into this too soon. Please. Don't let this be a mistake. What gang are you free supposed to be? We're not a gang. And we're not freaks. Ugh. We're ninjas. Huh? huh? Yeah! Perfect. I've been practicing this move for months. Can't hit what you can't catch. Yeah! Forget this. I'm out of here. He. Whoa. The train's kicking in. They're actually doing it. Talk about zero training. Yeah. You ever hear of ducking or blocking? I don't remember training you to jabber. Just finish your business like I taught you. Watch all the incoming attack angles. Weapons at the ready. Know your next strike before you finish the first. Stay a step ahead of them. And always cover each other's backs. Yes, Sensei. Yes, Sensei. We... we don't know, Sensei. It's like... It's like he's frozen solid. <laughs>